Aloha. You're watching F5 On Demand. We're here in San Francisco for RSA 2015. And we're also in the RSA booth. Imagine that. What's your booth number, by the way, Josh? Uh, no idea. No idea. <laughs> it's the biggest booth in the North, North Hall. So I'm fortunate to have Josh Waterloo. He's a technical consultant with RSA. How you doing, Josh? Thanks for joining me. Doing well, thank you very much. And so we were having this conversation about two-factor authentication, right? And two-factor has certainly been around for a long time. There's a long history with two-factor, but it's, but it's also starting to evolve a little bit, isn't it? So tell us a little bit about this. Sure, yeah, over the time now, what we're seeing now is we want strong authentication. We also want ease of use, right? So we want to make sure the not inconvenience end users, but still provide that strong authentication. So that's what we're doing now today, what we'll end up showing you guys. So what are what are companies like struggling with really when it comes to authenticating their employees and other outsiders to gain access to sensitive information? What are their troubles? Their troubles today are going to be moving beyond just the perimeter as well. So you want to secure your internal as well as your external. But then as well, making sure that everybody's using two-factor authentication. So not just employees or contractors, but your partners, anybody else that's doing anything, any offshore providers, et cetera, are all doing that strong authentication. And so we talked about this kind of, there's, so there's two-factor, which is, you know, your username, password, plus something else, whatever that may something be. You know, something you don't know. Yeah. But now we're actually moving into this whole uh, realm of risk-based yeah. authentication. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so that's going to be something you have, right? So this could be your device. So if we're looking at device information as well as user information. So from a device perspective, you know, user agent string, what's the browser version, uh, browser language, things of that nature. Even something such as a cookie per se could be a, a part of the device. So it's really doing those more, those endpoint device checks before you even allow the person to enter their username and potentially token to then get into the sensitive info. Yeah, so basically a user experience would be a username and password, and then what we end up doing is having a risk engine then evaluate, look at that device information, user information, build what we call a risk score. That risk score then goes against what we call an assurance level. So based on that, we'll actually see if we want to step up that authentication. So do an identity confirmation challenge. So that could be a, a variety of things. So security questions, you know, what's my grandmother's first name, to even let's say an, on, uh, an email or an SMS text message. In order to do that strong authentication. Uh, so it's even so it's that little like little mini question that comes along before you then give them access. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is you can already be on a registered device. So depending on that risk score, you might just be username and password, but still doing that multi-factor authentication. So it's about ease of use, security, and beyond just a, a single uh, username and password. Well, the other thing is you could also have lost your device. Somebody is now putting in your username, but doesn't know your grandmother's first name. Boom, he's not in, right? You got it, exactly. So I understand you got a little uh, demo here. So we have, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, but we got a Powered by F5 signage here in the uh, RSA Secure ID booth. And I think we're gonna, so you got the browser right. up, right? Yep. So walk through here, this is a normal user experience. What we're gonna be going now is walking through F5's SSL VPN. Uh, so what we'll do here is this is actually gonna be using our risk-based authentication. So what we'll do is I'll go in here, I'll hit this SSL VPN login page, and what you'll see now is it's redirecting for me to do my risk-based authentication. So from a user perspective, I'm going to log in as H. Lee, put in that, it'll look and see it wants a password. So I'll do my password. I failed with my password. Oops. <laughs> so now I'll put in my password again. So now it's asking me for a challenge question because it hasn't seen this device. It's deemed that this is a risky authentication. So what we're going to do now is I'll put it in and I'm going to say, Jails, I'm going to, actually this is a bad login. As you can see here, okay, whoops, another login error, right? So I did it and put it in a good credentials. So now it's going to ask me what company I work for at 22. So now it's a different security question. So I'll say I worked at RSA. Oh, and I see, that's a good, a different security question, so they might run through all the possible spellings of Jane, for instance, to put, maybe get it, where instead, go on to a new question, which they're not going to be prepared for. Yep, and so what we could see here is now is I could register this device. So next time I come in, this could be another factor saying, I've seen this device, this isn't risky behavior, and allow the user to just do username and password to log in. Or I could say, no, I don't plan on using this again, like if I'm at a relative's house or a kiosk or something of that nature, right? So what I could do here is I could just say no, and I log in. 
And what you'll see now is it's doing the risk-based authentication and you log me right into my SSL VPN portal. And that portal page looks strangely familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, I believe it's F5, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's their uh, access policy manager, the big IP. Pretty cool stuff. This risk-based, this whole behavioral type of um, you know, risk-based analysis seems to finally be catching on after all these years, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot of the enterprises, because a lot of it is before there's always the pain. They want to do strong authentication, but the tokens can be cumbersome because you need to mail a token, dis distribution. Where now we say, okay, let's do this. We're doing strong auth without actually having to get anything in that user's hands. So security questions are not something you have to carry around, username and password, and you're still doing that strong authentication. Right, and you either don't, or you either know it or you don't. Exactly, you got it. Great stuff, Josh. I really appreciate your time. That's yeah, cool. Thank you. So a lot more about this kind of evolution of two-factor authentication into more of this risk-based authentication and a cool demo with the integration between RSA Secure ID and F5's Big IP Access Policy Manager. I do appreciate your time, Josh. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And great job. You were a little nervous at the top, but you did fine. No wor no oh, worries. Very nervous. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So for Josh, he works at RSA, I got Cecile behind the lens. I'm Peter, and I'm with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.